All right, so here it goes. Let's do this, eh? Try to do it all in one take. Why not? Um, I'm not going to do this kind of like live like I usually do. I'm going to kind of just talk and rant about this and put footage to it. So here goes nothing. Uh, so Destiny 2. Um, I'm kind of... I didn't have good things to say. And admittedly, I hadn't played the beta, but I saw what I saw, and it wasn't all that impressive. Um, one could debate that, you know, without looking into it a whole lot, you really can't say that. But this is Activision we're talking about. The, the practices have been seen with the first Destiny, which is mostly what I'm basing it off of. But we've also had years of Call of Duty games to base it off of also. I don't expect them to real realistically change their mentality. But even with that, you know, um, with things I have going on in the VGHC community, we kind of got into a heated debate because I posted someone's video, um, a certain YouTuber's video, and unlike him, I'm not going to resort to, uh, at certain points in the video, uh, basically make someone feel like their opinion doesn't matter or anything like that look you, you get destiny too that that it is what it is everyone has a different stance on value but look, fuck all that no one wants to hear all that so here's my stance uh the pc version which is what i'm playing on because pc is actually new unlike everything else so the game i i you know for the mediocre at best that I felt it was for the first Destiny, even with friends. Um, it's fun. I mean, and it plays pretty damn smooth. I don't have the best rig in the world, but I have one I'm pretty proud of and have been for years. It's good to know it's not dated yet to play one of the, you know, newer AAA games, so that's nice. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, 60 frames per second. The only time... I ran into a dip was online and it was kind of brief and because a play is at 60 frames per second um, funny thing about that is if frames drop you still kind of have a sort of working game whereas with 30 frames per second if you have frames dropping then you have a game that kind of doesn't work very well in my opinion um, so what I kind of did is I casually played this um, I did the campaign mission because you're kind of tossed into it so doing that in order like I guess you kind of have to do that first right and it teaches you like how to play it so that is what it is it's exactly what you would expect in Destiny 1 I don't really have good or bad things to say about it uh, you probably there's really not much to say about it I mean I'll show off a little bit of it here I'm gonna p conveniently put this in the order of which I recorded it so, campaign, it, it, it's more the same. It does seem more story-driven, which they did say. Um, but you could tell even in the voice acting, like, it seems like a uh, ghost in particular from the things that I've, I've gone through. Uh, there's a little more emotion there. There's a little more put into this than there was previously, if for no other reason, because it wasn't just, you know, they didn't change the voice actors or whatever, and they're keeping the same ones. Well, you know, it just seems like they're gonna focus on that more, which is a good sign because it was definitely a not such a good point for the first game. Um, then we went into I went into multiplayer, which there was two different types of multiplayer. I guess there was one that is strictly ranked, and then another one that is more casual. Uh, the mode that they chose for ranked, I didn't quite understand what to do, so that kind of affected the gameplay. I, I just suck, but I mean, that kind of affected the gameplay, but it, it was okay. You know, it was nice to feel like my shots actually connected, even though they're not dedicated servers, to which, why the fuck not? That's, there's no excuse for that. I don't understand. Um, we can go back and forth about that all day, but let's just say it for what it is. You know, they cheaped out, and they don't have it's it's dumb there's no excuse and but you know it is what it is we'll uh deal with it and move on with the video but it was good to actually feel like my shots would connect and i guess the true stress test really comes when the full game releases but at least for right now it's it's pretty damn smooth so you know not, no real complaints there 
uh, the supers. Uh, I, I only played as a warlock, like I didn't go around playing as a titan, also as uh, the hunter, because if I played, I'd probably go warlock like I did before, so I don't really have a need to play those. Uh, I also didn't feel, for my personal experience, if I was to get the game anyway, to evaluate it based on the other classes, because I wouldn't play them. Uh, maybe if I liked it enough, I would be open to them, but that's that's going past what I'm trying to get out of this video, or was trying to get out of, you know, either making a decision one way or the other, or any, anything like that. Anything to evaluate it, I, I did what I felt was best for this. And there's a lot more to do in this demo versus the first destiny demo which is great you know i didn't play it for like 20 to 30 minutes and then was done with it but you have the two different modes um the casual one was more enjoyable because it was controlled so basically like capture the flag uh same typical stuff um there was some uh, tea bags which may or may not be in this it was actually kind of funny because i think uh i teabagged this one guy and then he teabagged me back later in the match that may or may not be in this footage i'm not going to look for it it's not that serious but just know that that happened was pretty damn funny. Um, so then we can move on to uh, the strikes. And there's one strike in this. I will say, I'm a fan of this. If, uh, if they continue things like this, I would be very much okay with it. The strike felt more, I guess, less mundane-like. Like, it felt very different from what I played in the campaign. If they all have that kind of feel to it, I would be okay with it. As opposed to kind of going somewhere that you're already used to in the campaign, and it kind of just being horde mode, and I don't know, I felt there was more character, if that makes sense, for the strike, in my personal opinion. Um, the boss actually seem to have more mechanics involved so maybe this is kind of their way of uh teasing raid type mechanics which you know that that would be cool i, I didn't expect there to be a raid realistically in the beta that's way too much but um if this is an indication of where strikes and raids are going like this is this is good i like it uh, the, the floor kind of breaks a few times and you end up doing different stuff, and you know the floor gets on fire in two different positions. They get to switch between. You got enemies coming at you. It's a, it's your typical Destiny type fight, but I don't know. I, I, I definitely think um, the bosses are still kind of bullet sponges, but I guess they have to be so they actually last. Um, I, I was a fan of this fight. Uh, if, if there's more, if this is what's to come, then that that's certainly a good thing so if if nothing else this beta does a much better job of selling you on the game as opposed to the first one which was just kind of like eh so i mean that's a step in the right direction um of course the other struggle with this and we're going to have more footage to kind of just go along with me speaking here but um the other thing with this of course is since this is on pc it comes out two weeks later so what do you do? Do you buy the game on console and play with people and then go buy it on PC anyway, basically double dip? Or do you just wait the, uh, the two weeks? Uh, that's the cat, uh, which may or may not be in this thing. I'm not gonna edit that out either because I'm trying to do this all in one take. But yeah, um, so I don't know if that's gonna be it's going to be a struggle, you know, if, if you want to just legit wait for the PC version, uh, you're missing out on two weeks of gameplay, and you have these people that may or may not come over from the console, because they have mommy or daddy's credit card, and they already have experience, so you feel like a complete another scrub right from the beginning, like, nothing you can do about it, they have the experience, you don't, or, you know, they spent all day looking at YouTube or whatever, so then, because they don't have a job, YouTube slash Twitch, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, that's something that could potentially happen, but, um, it's, there's enough, I, I'll, I'll say this, there's enough going on with the PC that I can just, I couldn't imagine going to a console version, and, and it sucks, because that would alienate many, 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 many people I know, unless I got some people that otherwise don't play the game into Destiny 2, 
and then we just play it. Then I can enjoy it that way. Because what I wouldn't want, and this happened quicker than I would have liked. I mean, it did last some time, but it happened quicker than I would have liked, where everyone just kind of slowly got off of the game, and more... Really just, like, more off of raids, and that's really all that mattered. What I could hope to see is not necessarily having to just do raids for the sake of progression, but also not being forced to only be on, um, what's it, every now and then when they do the Iron Banner. I'd like to see more of a, uh, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for there. Just, just something that doesn't feel forced, because you either had to be good and do the raid, and only so many people were willing to do that, and, uh, or just go on Fire and Banner and, you know, keep doing it whether you suck or not, but eventually you'll get something good because that's the way the system works. Uh, that kind of balances itself out. That would be good. Um, for getting stuck with randoms, on PC, I'd like to think that's better if for no other reason because there's a lot of other MMOs that are PC-based, or at least partly anyway, and people are much more experienced at these things. And unless something changes, uh, raids aren't going to be... They're going to have mechanics because it's a raid, but it's not going to be super complex like something like FF14's Ozma or... Um, that's really the best example I could think of because I'm not really an MMO guy, but something that's not that serious and finding people who are competent and are willing to work with you but that might also be in part because of the destiny community because that is one thing that regardless of the hate that can easily go towards the game that is one thing i have to give it to them you know you have your occasional douchebag but that's an any um it's nice to know that people are very much willing to work with you. And, you know, the people that are or just want to be jackasses, you kind of just call them out once you learn to raid, and that is what it is, you know. Life, life goes on. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I could have come at this in a very different manner, which I mostly did in the group. Um, anyone who doesn't know what I'm referring to, I have a Facebook group called Video Gaming Hardcore, or BGHC for short. It's a casual group where we share a lot of gaming news and stuff like that. Uh, you'll find myself as the uh, myself as, as the founder of the group and other dedicated admins as well who, you know, run this group and, you know, we just talk about things casually. And this is going to be posted in there because, if for no other reason, because it's Destiny 2, um... I think we're going to get more eyes on this one, but it's also why I wanted to make sure that I kind of made a fair stance on the game as opposed to just coming at it with complete hate, which I'm sure is how the other thing came off. And make no mistake, like, I, I really don't have the confidence in Activision, because it's got to be mostly them, right? But Activision, you know, putting pressure on Bungie to make the game that we deserve. I mean, we're already talking about DLC details, and that looks very similar. You know, the Season Pass expansions 1 and 2, which probably isn't all of them, just like they did the first time. So we're already kind of seeing um, potential behavior that I'm not willing to just drop $60 on. Like, if this literally goes just like Destiny 1 did, I will be better off waiting for the complete edition or whatever the hell they end up coming out with. But there is a part of me that enjoys games that much more when they work better, and the PC version does an excellent job of making a stronger case in that direction for the game uh, performing better. And it certainly does. I mean, looking better, that's obvious. But performance is a big thing for me. You know, if, if a game works, pretty important detail there. But before I get too much more rambly with this, I think pretty much everything that has to be said has been said. Um, especially since I did also just mention now that I still don't think it's... Uh, I don't necessarily think it's worth retail price, but I don't... I, I kind of side with it. A console, I don't think there's a lot to 
really be discussed and because of the, the distrust I don't really see it but on PC it would be something I'd be willing to kind of reconsider and I would say that maybe even in the case of the console if the, if the audience was there but it's just it's that struggle you have because cr unfortunately um, cross play is not a thing that is made easy at this point in time. I'm looking at you, Sony, because this is on you. But, you know, it's not exactly an easy thing at this time. And of course, when you throw money at whatever company for exclusive content, here's once again looking at you, Sony. But, you know, that's a topic for, I guess, another time or maybe even a podcast or some shit in the future. Anyway, said too much. This is going to get rambly. This is, I should have cut it off like two or three minutes ago when I said I was going to do that. So I'm going to do that right now. And, uh, Thanks for watching. Take care. Turns out a lie, because I actually do have one more thing I want to throw into this. I do like the, the ease of being able to switch between the keyboard and mouse and the controller. Because some games, it's not an easy process, or you have to plug something in, or some... It, even as I found out recently, apparently in the first Black Ops, you have to uh, it, you have controller support, but it's very it only works like when you're actually playing, which is fucking weird. But being able to transition between controller and keyboard like at any time, because I, I, there was literally one point where I was playing with the keyboard and mouse, and I did I didn't know I don't know the controls on PC. So I figured, you know, WASD to move, shift, probably run, so on and so forth. So I was trying stuff on there, but then I had my Super and had no idea how to use it on the keyboard. So I quickly switched over to my controller, which was right beneath my feet, and was able to do that without any interruption on gameplay whatsoever. Very smooth, I like it, great decision, um, and that'll be that. This'll be where it ends. Take care, guys.